The Starling House, written by Alex E. Harrow, or Harrow, was published, I believe, in October of this year. So it's uh, pretty new. And it's about 304 pages long. And I was really looking forward to reading this book because look at the cover, first of all. How cute, how pretty. And it came out around Halloween. And so I chose it for my book of the month. And I was let down. I don't really have a ton to even say about this book. I, I watched I watched another YouTube uh, video of a woman, I forgot her name, reviewing this book and she called it a rant review. I did not dislike it so much as to call this a rant, but this was definitely not one of the best books I've ever read. But, you know, everybody likes different stuff. This is just not one of my favorites and I'm gonna talk about why. So yeah, this book got a lot of attention when it came out. It's already got a lot of reviews on Goodreads, which is crazy since it came out, what, two months ago? Basically, this story follows a girl about my age, 26, I think they say, named Opal, and she and her brother live in a motel together because they are orphaned, and her brother, I think, is 16, and really, really bright, and Opal and her brother Jasper's mom died tragically several, several years ago, so Opal basically lied about her age to get custody of her brother, and she dropped out of high school, and so she has no real career, no education, and her whole life is just earning money to take care of her brother Jasper, who, like I said, is very, very bright. So much of this book is Opal trying to earn enough money to send Jasper to a fancy boarding school. And in order to earn money, uh, she is working at Tractor Supply Company in a, a town in Kentucky called Eden, which I believe is made up. And there's this house in Eden that has all these rumors surrounding it. It's described as like a big, old, huge, old Victorian manor, um, very old and very run down and everyone thinks it's haunted. And it's called the Starling House because the, the original family was the Starlings. And Opal gets a job housekeeping at the Starling House for the man that lives there named Arthur. And I don't think we ever learn Arthur's age, but I'm assuming he's a few years older than Opal, I think like early 30s, and he's described as ugly and rude. So Opal starts cleaning this house and we learn that the house kind of has a personality, like it, it likes Opal, which I actually thought was cute. The house is probably my favorite character in this whole book because none of the characters are very likable, uh, especially Opal. She steals, she lies. I mean, everything she does is for her brother, which is like nice or whatever, but I just didn't like her very much. She seems kind of rude. And I mean, I think the author was trying to make her come across as like tough and, um, you know, sarcastic and whatever. But to me, it just came off as like, this girl's not very likable, <laughs> which is okay. You know, main characters don't have to be likable, but it's hard to connect with a character or root for a character that you don't even really necessarily like. Anyway, Opal starts cleaning for this this man, Arthur, who lives in the Starling house. The house is gross and in disrepair and falling apart. And within a few months, Opal makes it nice again. And then things take a weird turn. I didn't really know where this book was going and even after I finished it, I don't really understand what happened. And that's part of why I didn't like this book so much. I was confused. My cat is such a whore for attention right now. He's hungry, it's his dinner time. Oh, sorry. So without spoiling a ton of stuff, what I, what I gathered is that this house is also a portal to hell, I think. And Arthur is a warden of the house. And what that means is he has to fight off the beasts that live in the underland. Like it was, I didn't really understand what was going on. And maybe that's cause I'm dumb, but the ending was just so confusing to me. I didn't understand what was going on that when it was over, I was like, just kind of like over it. Like I didn't really care anymore. I didn't really like, I just didn't love this book. I mean, I didn't like the pace. I didn't like the writing style. I thought the plot was confusing and kind of weird and boring. And overall, I was just kind of, kind of bummed about it. The cover is beautiful. Honestly, I might just hold on to this book because of how pretty the cover is. But I don't know. I just thought it was kind of, I love haunted house books. I really, really do. But this one, the plot was confusing. I didn't like any of the characters. And there's a romance 
that comes out of nowhere. The two characters have absolutely zero chemistry and all of a sudden they're like in love. Like, I, I don't know. This author, this is not her first book. Apparently she's written another one called The 10,000 Doors of January, which I heard is way better than this one. So that was probably the shortest review I've ever given, but um, The Starling House, if you wanna be, if you like haunted house books, uh, maybe check it out. Otherwise, honestly, I would I would skip this one. It was it was hard for me to get through it. Um, I had to really sit down and force myself to finish it, which is I, I never DNF books and I never I, I save one stars for books that were absolute garbage. This book was not absolute garbage, but it was pretty blah. So I gave it a, a two on Goodreads. Um, so anyway, that's my spoiler-ish free review of Starling House by Alexi e. Harrow. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.